the way. Stop there. Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, commercial photographer and photography instructor. And I'm here to run through some of the key features and operations of the Hasselblad H5D camera. Now, like me, if you're a professional photographer, you're probably gonna use a camera like this in manual mode, but I just wanna go through some of the basic exposure modes and basic functions first, before we move on to some of the more interesting aspects of this camera. So let's take a look at some of the operations on this camera. Okay, so we're just looking at the top of the camera at the LCD information screen and some of the key buttons around the top. We have the on off button on the bottom right there of the top panel. And on the side, we also have a couple of buttons on the side of the prism here. And we use this button on the side exposure button to change the exposure modes. I'm in manual there, I can switch to aperture priority to shutter priority, program mode and program variable, which is just a program mode that takes into account the lens you're using and certain shutter speeds that might be required for that lens. Now by using the uh, scroller here, I can change the metering mode. So center weighted metering, center spot metering and spot metering. So I'm just gonna put that back into center weighted and just going to put the camera back into manual mode. And then when you're finished with a particular setting, you've got the options of exit or save. So in this instance, the button that says flash is above the exit. I can press that for exit, or the button that says ISO and white balance is above the save menu, and I can press that to save the settings I'm in. So I'm just going to exit out of that now. So for this shoot, we're shooting in tethered mode with the camera attached to the computer and the software for this camera. But obviously with a camera like this, you can also shoot untethered. And when you shoot untethered, the camera records the images to a CF compact flash memory card. That memory card is accessed through this panel here where you can load and unload it. And you just simply slide the door panel open, pops open there. And then you have an eject button to take the memory card out or insert the memory card back in again and then simply shut the door. Now you can leave the memory card in the camera even if you are shooting tethered. Now, if you are shooting tethered, you would be shooting with the supplied firewire cable, which goes into the port on the side of the camera here. There's a little trap slide door there that allows you to insert the firewire cable into that slot to push it in. Obviously make sure you've got the connection of your firewire cable the right way round. And that firewire cable obviously connects to the firewire cable on your computer. Now, if like me, you have a computer or a laptop that does not have a firewire cable, uh, such as this laptop, which I shoot to with my Hasselblad, this one uses a Thunderbolt connector. And in that instance, I use a Thunderbolt to firewire uh, connector or adapter. So, Let's get started using this camera in tethered operation. Uh, we've got a basic uh, product shoot set up here at the moment and I'm just going to attach my uh, flash sink to the top of the camera to allow me to shoot the picture. And those pictures will now go into Lightroom or into the Hasselblad Focus software. So if you prefer Lightroom and you're more familiar with it, you can shoot tethered with the H5D into Lightroom. But here I am using Hasselblad Focus, which is the software specifically for this camera, which gives you really good control over the raw 3F file format and also allows you to do things like remote client viewing, which we'll show you a little bit later. So let's start off looking at the operation of the camera on screen here. With the camera tethered into focus, I can now control my main camera functions such as the shutter speed here and the aperture settings along here and also the ISO in that drop down menu here. And of course, I can trigger the camera by pressing the trigger button in the top right hand corner. 
We also have control over the focus, so I can uh, fine tune the focus with the minus or plus buttons here, and you can adjust the coarseness or the fine movements of the focus by using the command or alt keys on your keyboard in conjunction with the keys on the screen there. Now, in the Hasselblad software, you have all of the usual um, information such as histogram, curves, color correction, noise filters, and all the things that you would expect from a professional system. And the Focus software allows you to attain the very best from your Hasselblad 3F raw file format before you export the files for your client or for further editing in Photoshop. In the browse mode, you have a useful navigator tool here, which allows you to choose an area of the image to check focus. And you can see there it's giving me a focus check on screen. And with the navigator tool here, I've got it as a floating panel. And you can set many or pretty much all of your panels to be floating panels if you prefer, which is fantastic if you're working in a dual screen setup. You can have floating panels on one screen with a full screen image on the other and really operate the Focus software system in a very versatile way. Other useful features of the software are the ability to zoom in on screen and pan around, previewing your image at 100%. You can even compare images side by side with the compare tool, allowing you to rate them for easier organization later. The focus mobile feature even allows your clients and art directors to browse all of the captured images independently on their mobile or tablet devices while you can continue working. Clients can even preview and star rate their favorite images, freeing up your time to continue with the shoot without them intruding into your workspace on the main interface. Another great feature of the Focus software allows for customization of your H5 camera. In the customization section, I can access the camera and configure it to the way I want to shoot and work. For example, if I prefer my scroll wheel to operate in the opposite direction to the default setting, I can change it here. I can easily adjust many of the parameters in the drop-down menus, including bracketing order and bracketing exposure levels, or even program in the interval time and the amount of exposures for time-lapse photography. These adjustments can also be entered directly on the camera. You can also create your own preset profiles for different cameras or shooting scenarios, allowing you to quickly retrieve different configurations. Now, before I show you the untethered operation of this camera and some of the onboard menu systems, I want to tell you about the weather sealing on this camera, because the H5D has an all new weather sealing system. And to put this to the test, I put this camera through hell and back on a shoot in Iceland. I shot in some of the worst possible conditions for a camera, including water mist and spray from waterfalls, salt spray from the ocean, and some of the nastiest fine ash and dust you can imagine, all in howling winds and freezing cold temperatures. And while I wouldn't encourage putting your camera through this sort of treatment, I'm pleased to say the camera performed admirably and allowed me to capture shots with a medium format camera in an environment that I would have not thought previously possible. Long exposures and very long exposures with the two minute and eight second default setting meant I didn't even need to switch to B or bold mode for this type of work. This provided me with quick and easy ways to be creative without the need to attach a cable release to the camera. Shooting in these conditions often meant that tethering to a laptop wasn't really an option. Fortunately, the new improved camera processors gave me enhanced viewing and screen functions, some of which I'll run through with you now. So if I take pictures untethered, 
Then the images are now transferred to the camera's CF memory card. And one of the first things that I'm going to want to do is to check the focus. By pushing the P2 button, I can activate the focus check. And using my top scroll wheel, I can scroll to the right and I can scroll up and down with the back scroll wheel. We can also control the position of the target with this button left, right, up and down here on the back display screen. But I find it easier with the control wheels. So once I've got my target check position correct, press P2 again and it zooms in and gives me a very accurate focus check on the image. And then I can bring the image back again just by pressing the menu button and uh, retrieve the full screen image. Now, the other things that I like to check are my histogram information. So if I push the image button again, it brings up basic information about the ISO and the file number, etc. Press it again, I get the histogram information, which I like to uh, check to make sure the exposure level is correct, especially when working outdoors. By using the up and down keys, I can bring up extra information to give full detail information uh, about the aperture, lens, etc., metering modes. And I can also switch to the histogram information for each color channel in uh, the uh, red, green, blue there. Now, when shooting, you can choose to have the information here permanently displayed or to have the histogram come up and be permanently displayed with each image too. I can also browse all of the captured images by pressing the minus button here and then scrolling through the images as necessary and then pressing the plus button to zoom back in or zoom in even further and then navigate around the image to check focus and other portions of the image if I desire. Pressing the minus key will take me back out to the full screen image. By pressing the P1 button, I can bring up camera information that is on the top LCD screen and have that information displayed on the back screen. By pressing the main menu button, I can access some of the systems and functions of the camera and change settings as well. So here, using the up and down scroll with the back scroll wheel, I can find the desired setting and then I can use the top scroll wheel to scroll to the right and scroll down again, go into custom options, for example. And here, I'm going to reassign the P1 button to a different function. So we'll change that function and I can use the true focus button or the AE lock button as the plus and minus buttons here if I prefer rather than using the ones here. So if I use that, I can choose through the menu and select the spirit level as an example. And then I say enter on that one and exit. And now if I press the P1 button, it is now the spirit level on the camera. The onboard spirit level is driven by the camera's built-in accelerometer, which also provides the capability for Hasselblad's unique true focus option. Focusing with the Hasselblad camera is easy. You simply point the camera at your subject press the button halfway down and it will find accurate focus. But if you have to recompose your shot so that the subject is off to one side of your image, then the subject to recording medium distance has changed and that will affect the focus slightly. So to compensate for this, Hasselblad's true focus system uses the accelerometer to detect how much movement you have applied and adjust the focus accordingly. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. So I'm re-tethering the camera to demonstrate this a little bit better. 
and I've turned the power of the lights down so that I can get the camera down to f4. Previously we were shooting at f11, but the depth of field would be too great with that to really demonstrate this true focus properly. So f4 with a shallower depth of field, I'm hoping I can demonstrate this to you a little bit better. So I'm going to line up the subject, the label of the bottle, directly in the center of my picture, and I'm going to press the shutter button halfway down. Let me just do that again and get it in focus as so we get it out of focus first. And as I press the button, you'll see that the camera projected a striped light image pattern onto the label of the bottle. And that was to help it focus, which it does in low light conditions. It's now found its focus and it's nice and sharp on that label. And if I take the picture, that will be sharp. But if I want to do that again and recompose the picture with the bottle off to one side, let me just do that again. So I'm going to press the button halfway down. It's focused. And now I'm going to recompose the shot by putting the bottle over to the right hand side of my picture. Press the button the rest of the way down. We'll, we'll likely find that the label of the bottle is not as sharp as it should be because of the repositioning of the camera to subject distance. So this time I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to use the true focus button so that the camera knows that I'm going to recompose the shot. So let me position the camera back onto the bottle at the center of the shot. I'm just going to spin it completely out of focus. Here, this time I'm going to press the true focus button. This will pre-warn the camera that I am going to recompose the shot and then it will compensate by adjusting that focus. So I'm pressing the true focus button. The camera has now found its focus. I can release the true focus button and I can recompose the image and then press the shutter the rest of the way down and now we will find that the recomposed image still maintains a sharp label because the accelerometer in the camera has compensated for the recomposition, recompositioning of that shot. So here we have our first picture and you can see there the label is pin sharp. This is where the bottle was right in the center in the focus zone. And then moving on to our second picture, this is where we recompose the shot without true focus. And looking at the result there, we can see it's slightly softer on the label. And let's take a look at the third shot. And in the third shot, here we can see with the true focus, the label is pin sharp. Now, before I take this camera to pieces, let's run through some of the onboard menu systems. Okay, starting with the most obvious, the scroll wheel here will change our aperture setting and the scroll wheel at the back will change our shutter speed setting. And remember in the custom functions you can switch those sort of things around. Let's press the flash button and you can see we've got EV value change uh, here and I can switch from normal sync to rear sync on the flash mode as well. And remember exit or save with the buttons above the exit or save icons in the LCD. If we look at the autofocus button, we have single shot, continuous focus, true focus, and manual focus. Exit again. ISO and white balance. ISO changed with the top scroller wheel. And if we want to change the presets for the color balance, we can do so here with the back scroller wheel. Or if you want to manually set the color balance, you can change it to Kelvin and adjust the color temperature in Kelvin units with the back scroller wheel. Going into the menu, we have the interval timer that we looked at earlier, which again, you can enter, set the parameters within here. And we have the drive mode. Let's take a look at the drive mode. Drive mode, continuous shooting, single shot shooting. Exit from that. Self timer mode, bracketing mode, where we can set our exposure brackets, how many frames we want to expose for the auto bracketing, the order of the bracketing, whether the uh, light 
exposure first or last, that's that type of thing. And then back to settings, go into enter. We can now adjust some of the custom options. Uh, some of the things that we saw earlier that you could adjust within the uh, focus software, we can also adjust in this part of the menu system here. Exiting out of that and copyright image information, you can pre-form your own copyright metadata to be stored on your image files. And back out of it there, date and time settings, system status, which just basically tells you your firmware, uh, body number, version, all that type of stuff. And exit out from there, back to custom options. Okay, so that's the menu options. And then um, we have a light to illuminate the display on and off. And if you hold that button down, you get a battery check as well. And then uh, one really useful feature is the uh, flash button. If you hold the flash button down, you'll see a padlock symbol appear in the bottom of the LCD display right next to the battery symbol. And now the scroll wheels are locked. Everything's locked so that I can't change the settings. And this is really useful because if you create a, a specific aperture shutter speed combination um, on a shoot outdoors uh, and you know it's exactly the right setting for the conditions right. and the flash output power, etc., you can lock yeah. those settings in and not worry about okay. accidentally changing them or moving them, especially when you're using the scroll wheels to view through images on the display screen. And then to unlock it, hold it down again, and it unlocks the padlock. And then finally, the on-off button on the top of the LCD screen. Now, we also have on the back of the camera the AE lock, the exposure lock button. We have a recess button here for formatting the card. If you hold that button in, it will bring up the dialog of asking you if you really want to format the card. That's why it's recessed to protect against accidentally pressing that button. And then there is also the true focus button that we looked at earlier. Now, on the front of the camera, there are a few extra pieces that we need to look at. So here we have the stop down button for stopping the lens aperture down and the mirror lock up button, which I use regularly. Um, if you want to avoid any mirror shake in macro shots, or if you want to reduce the delay time, if you're using a trigger sensor system with the Hasselblad camera. And then in between the two is a cable release uh, input port. And then on the side again, uh, we had our exposure modes button here and also exposure compensation button there. And there was one uh, other important thing I forgot to mention on the top, the power button on the top uh, bottom corner there also serves as the profiles button. So any of those presets that you saved in the camera configuration, um, you can access by pressing the on off uh, briefly as the profiles. Okay, so let's take this camera to pieces. One of the great things about the Hasselblad system apart from the larger sensors and the higher resolution and the optical quality, is the system's versatility. Now, for example, with this 50 megapixel sensor that I've got on the back of this H5, I can take that sensor off and attach it to a technical view camera with tilt and shift movements for shine flog corrections if required. And I can do that simply by removing the sensor from the camera by pressing that button in on there and pulling this button at the side and that will release the back from the camera. So here I have the 50 megapixel sensor as a separate module and with the right attachment I can put that onto a technical or view camera. Additional to that I can even replace the viewfinder so if I prefer to use the waist level finder to view the images I could attach that instead of the prism finder. And one of the other great things about the modularity 
is it means it's very easy to clean the camera and keep the sensor clean. Often with small format cameras, dust particles on the sensor can be a real problem, but with this particular sensor, it's very easy to clean. I can simply take some clean air. Be careful if you're using compressed air not to get the propellant coming out. So just give it a test squirt first. But then you can just blow the sensor clean and if you have any stubborn particles on the sensor, you can use an e-wipe to wipe it clean as well. And that means you can also clean the viewfinder and the prism if necessary. Now, with the Hasselblad system, there's also a variety of lenses and accessories available. Some of them quite interesting. In particular, there is the tilt and shift adapter, the HTS 1.5. This allows for intermediate tilt and shift corrections for shine flood corrections. And uh, other accessories that are quite interesting are a macro converter, which allows you to convert wide angle lenses into macro lenses for uh, interesting effects. I've also got a variety of lenses here, and there are other lenses in the system and other accessories available. One useful accessory for me is to have a couple of spare batteries recharged, especially if I'm working in the field. And if you need to take the battery off of the camera, that's really simple. Just push that button in, pull that lever down, and that removes the battery ready to recharge that one. And then finally, if you need to remove the lens, you just simply push the button in on the side and rotate the lens like so. And that's the lens taken off of the camera. But I'm guessing if you've invested in a camera system like this, you didn't really need me to show you how to remove the lens. Well, that about covers it for the general features and functions of the H5D. You can find out more about specific features of the camera and other system accessories by downloading one of the appropriate PDFs or videos from the Hasselblad website. For firmware upgrades to the camera, these can be accessed and installed through the Focus software. I'm Carl Taylor. Thanks very much for listening.